So in this uh, lab, we will try to use the automodal function that in, in the rapid miner. So that can help us to train different type of machine learning models. And also they can also help us to optimize the different type of machine learning models. So this lab is more like um, the showing that the entire process of a typical uh, machine learning model uh, process. So we will download some raw data and we will clean the data by using the uh, RapidMinder Turbo Prep. And next, we will bring the data to the auto model so that we can see that how the model can, uh, how the auto model can, uh, can train different type of machine learning models and also can optimize models and help us to decide which model we should use. Okay, uh, so let's go to the GitHub and also download the data that we are going to use. Uh, so for this week's lab, we are going to download the house price 4 Excel file. So that contains uh, uh, some house records that I downloaded directly uh, from, um, I think that is from Zillow. So, um, Okay, so that is some house selling records. So next, let's go to Rapid Miner and let's create a new folder. Um, okay, so let's call it Lab uh, Nine. Okay, and let's also import the data. So which is down is in my downloads folder. Okay, uh, you can see in this time so that we have more columns and. Uh, so that the data is uh, orange is uh, raw data so that uh, that I downloaded directly from Zillow. Um, so you can see a lot of um, missing values. OK. And let's save that one to our uh, lab nine folder. OK, uh, so now the data is downloaded. So let's just open it direct directly from the turbo prep. So the turbo prep is uh, the um, the tool that to auto clean the data. Okay, so let's see table prep. And uh, first, let's say that the uh, the target will be that now we can see the data quality. So we can see price has some missing values, bedrooms, a number of bedroom bathrooms, and whether or not they have parking lot, and also the heating. And you can see there are a lot of other type of information. Okay, and remember that um, we also have those. Uh, we have so many columns that have very low quality. Okay, uh, so the target will be is the status. So status means that is that house is still for sale, or if that house already has a contract. So if that house already has a contract, it will be pending. Otherwise, that house is still for sale. So we want to use the other information to make prediction to see that whether or not that house is for sale or pending. And however, so if you look at the uh, uh, this uh, bar chart, we can see that there are three types of the values. OK, so they are for sale, for sale by owner and also pending. So for sale by owner is similar to for sale. So our first step is that we want to replace a for sale by owner with for sale so that we want to um, combine those two as one type of the label. So let's right click and transformation and let's replace. So you want to replace for sale by owner same as for sale. OK, and let's say apply. OK, so now it looks nice. So we have we do have two categories. OK, one's for sale and also one's pending. And let's commit that transform. OK, and and now you can clean the data. So remember that uh, if we go to cleaning, so you can remove the low quality data. You can remove the highly correlated data. So here, let's say we just want to use auto cleaning. So just a single step. Okay. And they're asking, so do you have a target? So I say, yes, we are using status as a target. Okay. And next, uh, 
uh, Rapid Mining will clean the data. So it will first remove those data that have missing values or that has uh, very high stabilities. Okay, so it will um, or it, it has too many different values. Okay, so it will improve the uh, quality of the data. And also here you have the um, option that do you want to keep all the data to be original data type or do you want to change everything to be categorical data or numbers? So let's say we want to keep everything to be original. And here this is a, a option that you want to perform PCA, so component principal component analysis is a way to reduce the number of columns or do you want to normalize your data? So let's uncheck both. And next week, we actually will talk about what is PCA. OK. And now let's apply the data cleaning. So you can see now the data looks pretty nice. Uh, we do still have missing values for the status because status is our target. So uh, RapidMiner keeps the missing values on the status column. And let's commit this cleaning. OK, uh, and also uh, we also want to add a new field. So we know that in the um, um, real estimate market that um, the size of the house is very important. OK, uh, so the price and also area of the house is important. However, the, the unit price is also very important. So let's calculate the unit price. OK. Uh, so which is generate and let's see unit price uh, which equals price divided by the area of the house okay equals uh, divided by area of the house so let's update the preview we can say okay so now we have unit price so we just added uh, one more field manually so that you call unit price because uh, so for example it's kind of like the domain knowledge or, or the common sense tell us that unit price is a, is a very important feature uh, in the real estimate market so let's commit that change okay and one last thing that before we move in before I move ahead is that the lot size okay um, so by looking at the histograms uh, you, you see that there are a bunch of numbers that are uh, below net one so you can see point 0.7 and also we also do have some numbers that is above 1000 okay so this is something that um, you do need to identify this problem uh, manually because auto cleaning cannot identify this problem so this is a problem because uh, when people that um, put records on zero so when they talk about the lot size they are using different units so pro probably this one is the lot size in acres and this one is the lot size in square foot okay so that's why that they have so such different size uh, in the lot size and if you remember that in the in the data cleaning lab so we handled this issue by generate a new uh, lot size field uh, so we can do that one similar here so let's say generate and here let's see uh, we call it uh, correct lot size okay and here we, are, we will use a, a, a little bit complicated uh, formula so let's say we use if okay um, so if the lot size is great than 1000 okay so let's assume that if the oh let's see if the lot size is greater than 10 okay and we will um, return the the original value so that is the lot size because if that is greater than 10 it is highly likely it is in square feet uh, the lot size okay and else 
uh, we are going to retain the value that will so else that means the value will be in the acres so we need to convert the lot size from acres into square feet and i just googled that one acre equals this number of the square feet so i just copy this value okay and else it will be the lot size times this value okay so we use a we create a new field that is we call the right correct lot size that if the lot size is above 10 we will return the true lot size because that is highly likely that it will be the in square feet otherwise it if that is less than 10 we are we will assume that that is in acres so we are use we'll convert that one from acres into square feet and uh, let's update the review a preview and now you can see this one is less than 10 so now we in the new field it is now in uh, square feet so the data looks like pretty nice okay uh, so now i'm going to commit this change so now since we have the right lot size so i think we no longer need the wrong lot size so let's delete or remove the old lot size so um where is the lot the old lot size okay it's here okay so um uh, if we just right click transformation and we can remove and let's say apply okay and now this looks nice let's commit that change okay uh, so now you can bring the data to the models just by just by simply click the model um, we can also save the data cleaning um, as a separate process so just the like create process uh, so let's and you can also export the data so let's first ex, uh, export the data so let's call it uh, okay so transformed that's fine and let's also create this process okay and let's save this process to our lab 9 folder uh, so we call it data cleaning So that means that next time when you download the new data from Zillow, you can you can just bring the data directly here and it will perform the same procedure and you don't need to clean the data again. Okay. Uh, finally, let's bring the data to the auto model. So let's click model. Uh, so now you can see the cleaned data is now uh, being brought to our uh, auto model. Um, and they are asking, so what is a problem that you, you are going to resolve? So is that a prediction cluster or if you want to identify outliers? So cluster and also outlier are unsupervised learning. So let's say we want to make a prediction and we want to predict the status. Okay, so that will be a classification. And let's say next. Okay. And so here, do you want to map the classes into new values? And I think that's fine. And do you have a high interest category? So let's say I'm more interested in pending. So uh, you can see here we have 200 records that for pending and 800 records for sale. Uh, you can also define the cost uh, uh, for your results. So this is where so you can bring your business logic to this uh, prediction. So for example, if you make a right prediction, so if you predict the sale for sale, so how much money that will can bring to you. And if you successfully predict pending as pending, so what is the, um, the advantage, so how, how much profit that can bring to your business. If you made wrong predictions, so what will be the cost, etc. Okay, so let's just leave it as it is because right now I we are just doing some uh, demo so uh, we don't have very clear business logic so I, I just cancel it and next okay so here this is where you can see um, um, uh, ArcGIS Pro just selected some uh, features that they think is very important uh, you can see here the this one is uh, 
labeled as yellow. So that means that uh, so it is because it has very high stability. So uh, you can either select all or you can so that means you will select everything uh, in your from your column. Or you can deselect the yellow ones. So yellow ones that Revit Miner may uh, not recommend. So let's say I deselect all the yellows. OK. And also, I would still recommend uh, so you do go through the, the selected features. So because although we clean some features out, and also Revit Miner will also make some suggestions. So it is still not 100% um, um, robust. Or reliable. So, for example, the ID. Uh, so, because I guess we clean the data so that um, ID will be um, uh, is selected. So, however, I will not include ID because you know ID is just ID of those records. Um, and also, let's go through the others. Okay, and everything else looks like pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I just deselect ID and also I deselected um, this one. So petal. Oh, sorry, uh, patio. Uh, so because that has very high stability. Okay, let's go to next. So here, uh, so right minor will ask, so where do you want to execute your model? So uh, you can choose either use your local computer or you can use a cloud uh, server refiner server so I do have two uh, different cloud servers so if I if I want if I have very powerful cloud server so I can just send out the information to the send out the task to the cloud server and also the server will do the do the job so instead of using local computer um, because in most cases our local computer is not that powerful Okay, so in this case, I think most of us do not have the do not have a server set up. So let's just use the, the local computer. And what models do you want to use? So here, Refman already uh, select some models or filled out many models that are not suitable. So here we have Naive Bay, um, GLM, LR, and Fast Larger Margin. So that is a variation of the SVM. Deep Learning. So we we don't have we don't know. A lot of details about deep learning, uh, decision tree, random forest, uh, gradient boost trees, and also SVM. Okay, so those are some pretty uh, popular machine learning models, and you can choose: Do you want to use regular uh, regularization, and do you want auto automatically optimize for some models? And we say yes. So please uh, optimize those models. And on the right side, so do you want to remove columns with too many values? OK, uh, so the maximum value will be 50. And so that is in the date preparation category. So and it is really up to you. So if you want to remove the columns with too many values, uh, you can do that. Because that may, um, if you have too many values, so the computation might be lower. Do you want to extract data information and also text information? So, um, so that will also potentially increase the accuracy. However, so that will also um, increase the computation time. So let's uncheck that. Do you want to perform automatic feature selection? Okay. Um, so let's say um, yes. OK, however, so remember, keep in mind that so so that means right miner will try to select different features. So, so not all the features will be selected. And uh, do you want to uh, keep the, the feature that generate the highest accuracy? Or do you want to keep the features that um, produce a relatively simple model? Or do you want a balanced one? So let's say I want to find out the model that is balanced. Okay, uh, so that means that so Rapid Miner will consider the number of features and also the the simplicity of the model. So it will uh, find out the uh, the sweet point that is not too much complicated, and also 
um, uh, not, uh, and also the accuracy is very decent. Uh, automatic feature generation. So you can also uh, tell RapidMiner to generate um, some new features. So for example, the unit price is a new feature that we generated based on price and also area. Uh, because we know that is a very important um, a feature that is uh, for the house price. So we, we manually created that one. However, so you can also allow ripe miner to do this for you. And that will also uh, increase a very long com computation time. Okay, so I will deselect that one. Although if you choose that one, so uh, potentially, so um, the uh, you, you may have very high accuracy. Column analysis, so, so do you want to see which column is more important? And do you want to calculate correlations? And also do you want to explain the predictions? And we say yes. Okay, so now let's write. So first, drive miner will, will test different type, run the different type of the models locally. So you can see those are the models and uh, we just be um, being patient and also wait until uh, the model be finished. Okay, uh, again, we have to be uh, very patient uh, because uh, we enabled um, the feature selection. So the uh, uh, rapid miner will try to test multiple time scenarios. Um, so here we can see we have we do have the result for the naive bay. And here we have the classification error, um, standard deviation of the classification error, and also gains. Okay. Um, and also total time, so you can see to run this knife base, it took four minutes, almost five minutes. Okay. Um, again, so to train one single knife vein model, so actually they run multiple iterations by choosing different type of the features. And also by choosing by choosing different type of the parameters. Uh, if you want to look at accuracy, and you can just check accuracy, and you can see accuracy is not that bad. Uh, you can also check the other um, uh, uh, indicators like uh, like AUC, okay, uh, just point six, uh, precision, recall. Uh, F1 score, uh, sensitivity, and also specificity, uh, specificity. Okay. And if you just look at the naive bay models, so depending on each type of models, so they will report a model in the best way that uh, well, we can understand. So remember that for naive bays, they are based on the probability theory, so that we can see the uh, the the distribution of different variables and also we can see the weight so for example what are the most important features that have been considered in the naive bay model so it turns out that deck washer house type and also number of bedrooms are the most important features uh, for the naive bay models and you can run a simulator so for example right now in naive bay models uh, we can see most the house are predicted as pending. Um, however, for example, if the if I have more bedrooms, so for for right now, uh, I have three bedrooms. Okay, so it is pending. So if I see I increase more bedrooms, let's say I have eight bedrooms. So you can see the probability that being pending has decreased. Okay, so that's very interesting. So if I have just one bedrooms, the probability of becoming pending has increased. And if I do have a deck, it is highly to be pending. And if my house is a townhouse, it is also highly likely to be a pending. And if I have washer, well, that if that that's definitely will be a pending. So we can see that by using naive base. We know that a single bedroom with deck, a townhouse with washer, will highly likely be sold. Being sold. Uh, you can check more details about the performance. Um, 
uh, live chat chart uh, feature sets. So feature sets is that what kind of the features has been selected in this model. So uh, uh, this box indicates that when we select all the features, OK, and we can see the error is higher and also the model is more complicated. Yeah, it's interesting. So because when you have all, all features, it definitely is the most complicated. However, the error is also very high. OK, and so that's why we need to find out the balance between the complexity and those errors. OK, uh, so you can see here if so that your final result that is selected. So we selected house type, washer, deck, and also bedrooms, which will give you a little bit low complexity and also will give you small errors. OK, and if you're interested in like, OK, so what is the one that has a, the smallest errors? So that means if we include in the zip code, OK, and the model will generate the smallest errors. However, the complexity will be a little bit higher. OK, and here you can see the predict result. OK, and uh, so that's the, the model for production. OK, so this production and also this model will be different depending on the model that uh, we are looking at. OK, uh, so now we have our second uh, the result from our second model, which is generalized linear model, we can see it took uh, actually uh, six minutes. And you can see accuracy is actually higher than the naive B model. And if we look at the uh, AC, AUC, you can see generalized linear model is also better than the naive, naive B model. And now if we compare the ROC, OK, we can see here, yes, generalized linear model does perform better than the naive base in terms of ROC and also AUC. Uh, if you look at the model, so now we have those coefficients. Again, those the models are different depending on the uh, which type of model you are talking about. And also weights are different. So for generalized linear models, the price is the most important feature and followed by the house type and also whether or not you have a washer and also whether or not you have a garden. Uh, we can also do the simulators. So for example, right now, uh, if the house does not have garden, single family home, and also at this price with without washer, it is highly likely not pending. So for example, if I do have garden, and also if I do have washer, actually, no garden will give you high um, uh, poss possibility to pending. And if I see if the house is also a townhouse, and if I lower the price, OK? I mean, that makes sense. I mean, if the price is higher, no one want to buy it. If the price is lower, so people tend to be buy it. OK, and you can also check the performance and also live, uh, uh, lift chart, life chart. OK, um, to be honest, I, I'm not sure about the life charts, but you can just check the help information for more information about life chart. OK, um, and also feature set. So again, so if we choose all the features, actually, it's the error is pretty high. Um, so we find out balance between the complexity and those errors. So in our final output, we do we include washer, price, house type, and those gardens. And here you can see the predictions. Okay, uh, so now the, all the models are finally over. Um, you can see that each model roughly uh, took seven minutes. So we have nine models. So it took more than one hour. So again, so please be patient. And here you can see we didn't just train those nine models. Actually, for each type of model, we tried different type of the combinations of the features. And also, we tried different parameters. So you can see the total model that has been trained is uh, more than 30,000. OK, so that is pretty amazing. So 
And also in terms of the accuracy, and we can see that the logistic regression model is a winner with accuracy of 80%. Um, and if you look at AUC, and the winner is generalized linear model. Okay. Uh, and if we look at the ROC, and we can see a uh, generalized linear model is indeed uh, the number one model. Okay. Um, and you can check the, the other uh, models, for example, um, the model that he, they use, and also weights, so for example, for the logistic regression model. The most important feature is actually the number of the bathrooms. Uh, for the deep learning, uh, the most important feature is house type, uh, whether or not you have the uh, ref uh, refrigerator and also bathroom and also whether or not you have the by uh, dryers. Okay. And also remember that uh, so uh, we didn't necessarily select to prefer the, the highest accuracies because we remember that we, we did select balance between accuracy and also complex, uh, complexity. And for the real production, so once you have the model that you preferred, uh, you can also deploy the model so that for the real predictions. Uh, so that also is a very nice feature in, uh, in Ripe Miner. Okay, the last thing I want to mention is that so uh, you can also save all the results. So um, again, RapidMiner is not a black box. So you can receive all the results, all the models uh, into our repository. So let's say we save that one to lab nine and let's call it auto model. Okay. Okay, so now if we go back to design view, and sorry, actually, I, I saved everything to the uh, to the lecture nine, not to lab nine. So I should save everything to the lab nine folder. So here you can see this the process for the data cleaning, which we did in the turbo prep. And if you open the auto model folder, you can see that everything is here. So for example, if you open the decision trees, and you can see the tree models, okay, performance predictions, etc. Okay, so later on, so if you want to dive deep into those models and you can see the details of those models.